we are very, very proud of the very strong and close bilateral relationship that was presented to this incredible coalition on Saturday night. So part of the fact the Iranian failed from the attempt to kill thousands of Israelis with their missiles, with their drones, with their suicide drones, uh, was the fact the coalition managed to basically make sure that those missiles won't get in the country. So if people are amazed from the fact so many missiles being thrown on Israel and barely no uh, you know, damage and uh, the people of Israel are safe, it's just because one reason, they didn't hit Israel, most of them. And, and just imagine how things would have looked if the, the missile that our defense secretary was showing to the world, defense minister Gallant was showing to the world, this is a five-story size, 18 meters. This is a huge missile. And think about it, you know, falling in the middle of a city like Jerusalem. We're now in beautiful scenery of Jerusalem, but look how populated it is. Just think about it, um, you know, hitting neighborhoods and people and children. It would have been a disaster. It's so clear that Israel needs to show here an act of deterrence to the Iranians. So the game is deterrence. The Iranians say, and I know you're going to say it wasn't a diplomatic compound, because that's what we've been hearing from the uh, Israeli side in the last few days. But it's widely believed that a diplomatic compound in uh, Damascus was hit on April the 1st. So Iran is saying it's responding to that. I can guarantee you it wasn't a diplomatic facilities. And honestly, when we're thinking about what Iran was doing, they're the last the last country in the world that can speak about a violation of diplomatic uh, respect because they heated our embassy in Buenos Aires. Um, they were the one who were hitting again and again Jewish communities around the world. And, and think about uh, the horrible terror attacks in Burgas, in Bulgaria, uh, that killed uh, so many Israelis. Think about the Jewish community in Argentina. All those acts of violence were committed by Iran. So you, we need to remember that. And at the same time, they're targeting the UK. So your MI5 was saying, the head of MI5, that they were planning to kill and to assassinate people on UK soil. What should Israel do now? You've been with the Prime Minister, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu today. What is the discussion that's being had? Uh, I think next is sanctions. Uh, when you're thinking about Iran, um, I think for the last um, two years, there was a little bit of, of uh, uh, impression the Iranians were getting from the world. Go ahead, you, you're going to get um, um, your, your economy will get back uh, to, to where it was, and we're planning on, on you know, creating more and more uh, arrangements and things to remind me the appeasement uh, back then uh, that was uh, a big failure policy, big failed policy. So the world was appeasing Iran and it's time for us to stop that. So this is the time to be hard on Iran. So there are many diplomatic ways to do that. And obviously, whatever the work having it will decide, this is for the work having it. There's a diplomat, I can tell you, the world can do much more. And I know that the Americans, including the UK government, together are planning more of a sanctions regime. So you've talked about uh, the diplomatic route. Uh, today I was speaking to the ex-Mossad director of intelligence. He said everything is, is on the table, uh, including the, you know, the idea of hitting nuclear facilities. Is that the impression you're getting from the conversations you're having with your leadership? I don't get any impression about anything tactical. So no one is, uh, you know, this is, this is one of those things that you need to be a cabinet member in order to be exposed to this information. So I'm not going to say things that um, definitely no one will share it in the media, but I'm just saying personally I'm not aware of the plans being discussed in the moment in the War Cabinet, and I think it's for the War Cabinet to decide. So uh, I think he's an ex-Mossad, so he's it, not official in any way. So I don't think what he says is what the current people are doing or saying or recommending. This attack happened at the weekend. Um, is Israel likely to respond anytime soon? I think this is not the right question. The right question is how to stop Iran to do this horrible thing again and to do these horrible things to more countries. So the missiles were fired on Israel and the same drones are the ones hitting European soil in Ukraine. And when we're thinking about the range of those missiles, they can get to London. So think about the future of Europe. Think about how they see America as the big Satan and Israel as the small Satan. The whole concept of the Iranian regime is against Western civilization. So it's not against Israel alone. And this is why the coalition was fighting together. And more moderate Arab countries were getting into this coalition. So if you're asking me, the biggest question is how to stop Iran. 
Joe Biden, Rishi Sunak, David Cameron, who's been here, Tony Blinken, the U.S. Secretary of State, are urging de-escalation and caution because they are worried this will spill out across the region. Today, we uh, interviewed the Lebanese foreign minister who said this will not just be about Lebanon, it'll hit Syria, it'll go to Yemen. This will spread across the region. So again, who's, who's the... The, the main head of the octopus that is creating this major de-escalation. De this is Iran, and Israel wants to de-escalate. We, we, we have no interest, believe me, we didn't choose the 7th of October war. The 7th of October war came because Hamas invaded, butchered, killed, and raped our women and children. And this is really the time for us to look at the regime and to say, this is the regime that killed Masa Amini, that is executing hundreds of people every year. No other country in the world is doing that on, on this, this type of, of brutality, total violation of, of, of human rights, and, and keeps on hiding behind those proxies. The mask was, was off on Saturday night, and it's time to the world to address this problem seriously. Ambassador, I have to ask you about the situation in Gaza. Just in the last few days, we've also now heard another U.S. official, Samantha Power, describe the situation as famine. The U.N. has described it as famine. They say it, there's a looming humanitarian crisis. What is Israel going to do now to resolve the issue in, in Gaza so that the people there don't continue to suffer? So actually, one of the positive things that um, the, um, Secretary Cameron was speaking about was the fact that Israel is doing so many efforts on the humanitarian aid issue. So Israel doubled and tripled the amount of um, trucks that are getting into the Gaza Strip. Distribution issue was always the main problem. So it wasn't just about aid getting in, it was also whether it's going to be distributed and getting to the right hands. And Hamas was main part of the problem because they were taking over the aid. The aid didn't get to the right hands of the people. And now we're doing our best to, to make sure that the distribution will, will improve as well. But there is one thing I can guarantee Israel is doing a lot on, on the humanitarian aid issue.